I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid, I said. I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely, in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Selah. All of us who have ever been a part of a religious faith were taught to pray to the Most High for everything. Along the way, religious leaders shift the focus from serving the Father to glorifying the God of this world. If you have been paying attention, majority of the world's population in the beast culture glorifies the Messiah and not the Father. According to the scriptures in the Bible, the journey to redemption began with the Israelites accepting the Father and the Most High established an everlasting covenant with his people. The Israelites depend on the Father for all their needs. Today, religious leaders through the beast religion have convinced majority of this world's population to seek and run after the deity called Jesus Christ. All people who have accepted Jesus rely on this idol to take their sins away. Israelites, nobody can take your sins away. Sin is breaking the laws of the Most High. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Israelites, taking away your sin is taking away the laws of the Most High. The Most High never took away his laws. The laws of the Most High are not done away with. The Most High used his laws to govern his creation. The Most High gave Adam laws to follow when he was in the garden. Why would religious leaders teach that the laws are done away with? Without laws, the people will become lawless. When you're lawless, anything goes. If the Most High took away his laws, then he shouldn't be mad when the people don't follow him. How can you transgress or sin if there's no law to break? If the idol of this world took your sins away, there wouldn't be a need for you to repent. The Most High gave his creation the opportunity to receive forgiveness of sin when they repent. Israelites, if the Most High took your sins away, why are you in captivity? Why does judgment starts with you? Why did the Most High remove you from his presence and allow the heathens to take your land if your sins were taken away? Why do you need to be redeemed if the God of this world took your sins away? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. According to religious doctrines, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your sins were taken away. A lot of Israelites accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior throughout history. How come your sins weren't taken away? Why are you still in the land of your captivity being oppressed? The book of Deuteronomy said, if you obey the laws, statutes, and commandments, all these blessings would come upon you. If you disobeyed, all these curses would come upon you. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Israelites disobeyed. From the time the Most High established his laws with the Israelites until this day, the Israelites suffered and paid the penalty for their sins. Even after the Messiah came, the Israelites' captivity wasn't reversed. You're still in the land of your captivity, living as bondmen and bondwomen. If your sins were taken away by the idol that saved you, why did the curses overtake you even after the Messiah died and took your sins away? Religion indoctrinate the people into believing as long as you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, heaven is your final resting place. Religious leaders use fear mongering to get many to accept Jesus. According to Christianity, Jesus is the only way. 
Anyone who don't agree with their doctrines are hell bound. Israelites, do you honestly believe the people who have a perpetual hatred for you, the same people who assist in enslaving you and put more value on their animals over you? Do you really believe your oppressors will help you find the way to eternal life? Your oppressors rule over you. Do you actually believe they will freely relinquish the power they have over you? Your oppressors go to great lengths to keep you in captivity. When will Israelites understand that all nations have conspired against you? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Presently in the awakening, we have come to find out that many of the doctrines taught to us in religion are false doctrines. The Satans indoctrinated the people in the various religious faith with false doctrines for multiple generations that so many are having a hard time departing from religion and their demonic doctrines. Now that the Most High is revealing all the secrets and everything that was done in the dark are coming to the light, some Israelites are struggling with the truth. The Satans use social media to give the ministers of Satan access to the lost sheep trying to return to the Father. The ministers of Satan are leading the sheep onto the broad road that leads to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Religion is the system the Satans use to lead the sheep astray. Now that the truth is increasing the knowledge of the people, just as the Most High prophesied would happen in the last days, a lot of Israelites continue to use religion's traditions to return and to serve the Father. Instead of praying to the Father, many are praying to the God of this world that is disguising himself as the Most High in the beast system. More and more people are worshiping the Messiah because of the signs of the times. They are forsaking the Father unknowingly through Messiah worship. Throughout the scriptures, it was the Most High and His people. When the Israelites went astray to serve other gods, they would endure hardship. The hardship they faced would cause them to repent and return to the Father to find deliverance from their oppression. Throughout the scriptures, the Israelites would serve the Father only until the New Testament God Messiah showed up. When the New Testament God entered the picture, suddenly the Most High didn't mind sharing his glory despite punishing his people in all generations who serve and worship other gods. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Even in the Israelites' ignorance, the Most High punished his people for bowing down to other gods. I can't wait for the day to come when the Israelites who believe that Jesus is the most high in the flesh know that they are serving two masters. The scriptures clearly state you cannot serve two masters. Israelites, the awakening should open your eyes to see that we are a people serving a sentence for our transgressions against our God. If we serve our God in the spirit and in truth, we wouldn't be captives until this day. From the time the Most High removed his people from his presence until this day, they have been on a journey to redemption. Not many Israelites see themselves as captives. Israelites, you're not in your own land. Therefore, you're in captivity until this day. Your captivity ends when the Most High sent the prince he put over his people and all the righteous to deliver them. Until the appointed time for our redemption, we are supposed to be humbling ourselves, praying, seeking the face of the Most High, returning to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. In addition, fighting against all powers, trying to lead us astray from our God. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Praying is an important part of many people's lives who have some sort of faith. 
Despite knowing the importance of praying, not too many people know what happens after they pray, nor do they understand the process of deliverance. Now that the Most High is tearing down the demonic doctrines that had a stronghold over his people, the remnant in the real awakening are starting to understand how to establish a relationship with the Father and how to work out their salvation. The truth of the Most High's words are sanctifying his people. A small population of Israelites are allowing the Most High to transform them by renewing their minds. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Before we get into what happens after we pray, as well as the process of deliverance, a lot of Israelites have a false view of deliverance. Deliverance and our redemption are two different things. We all need to seek deliverance. Every day we are being tempted by unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity that attack us through witchcraft and sorcery. If you're under heavy demonic oppression, you need to seek deliverance. All of us are targeted by unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity. Therefore, none of us are exempt from attacks. Deliverance is a part of our lives since we live on a battlefield. All of Adam and Eve's descendants live on a battlefield. The Satans wage war with you. They want to eliminate all of Adam and Eve's seed so that they won't have anyone to inherit paradise. The Satans believe the Most High will restore them to their former glory if Adam don't have any descendants. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me, and he will restore me to it with my hosts. Israelites, you should expect temptations from the Satans, unclean spirits, and the workers of iniquity who serve the Satans. Because the devils always return, we should always be ready to ask the Most High to deliver us from spiritual bondage. Israelites, deliverance doesn't mean you're never going to face trouble in your life again. You should always expect trouble from the Satans. The only time you are to let your guard down is after your redemption. Being redeemed is the final chapter. When the Most High redeemed his people, we no longer have to worry about sickness and death. We don't have to worry about the Satans and the workers of iniquity oppressing us ever again. While the Satans and all who follow them are in the lake of fire, the remnant will finally enjoy what the Most High wanted for his people from the beginning. Peace, love, and joy in paradise. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Israelites, our redemption and deliverance are two different things. All who are predestined to be redeemed will enjoy eternity with the Father. When it comes to deliverance, that is another obstacle. Israelites, the Most High can deliver you from one area of your life and the Satans attack you in another area. For example, the Israelite community as well as the indigenous black people collectively need to seek deliverance from the spirit of division. The spirit of division has a stronghold over the black community. Everyone can see that unity does not exist in the black community. The spirit of division is not the only spirit that have a stronghold over the black community. There are many other spirits that are oppressing black people as a whole. The Most High can deliver us from the spirit of division. However, the spirit of poverty continues to run rampant in the black community. Just because the Most High deliver you from one spirit, it doesn't mean he delivered you from all spirits that have a stronghold over your life. When the Most High deliver us from everything, that is our redemption. Don't confuse our redemption with deliverance. Spiritual warfare is an ongoing battle. That is why you must keep the armor of the Most High on at all times. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You can fast and pray, engage in spiritual warfare, looking to be delivered from the spirit of poverty. The Most High deliver you from the spirit of poverty. 
your finances turn around and you now have assets to help sustain your lifestyle. While the Most High deliver you from the spirit of poverty, the spirit of infirmity continue to attack you. You have to seek deliverance from the spirit of infirmity as well as all the spirits that are oppressing you. Israelites, that is why it's important to know what spirit is oppressing your life. When you know what devil is attacking you, you can demand your sevenfold from that devil who have stolen from you. Remember, a thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Unclean spirits attach themselves to you to rob you. The scripture said, when a thief is caught, he must give back sevenfold of what he stole. Israelites, that is why it's important to know the word. That way, the Most High can give you back what the devil has stolen from you. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. The Most High will show you the devil in the spirit realm. That is why you must decode the symbols to identify the thief. Let's say you see yourself getting married in the spirit realm. In the physical realm, you don't have a relationship, nor are you engaged. Once you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm, and the Most High give you the interpretation to what you saw in the spirit realm. In this example, the dream is revealing a spirit spouse. When the devil is identified, you cannot target this devil. Close the doors that gave this devil the opportunity to tempt you. Target this devil in spiritual warfare. Pray against the spirit spouse. Break the covenant and command the spirit spouse, which is a marine spirit, to restore to you everything that it has stolen from you. You should always ask the Most High for a double portion. The Most High usually restore more than you have lost. The Most High gave Job double for everything he had lost. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Israelites, it's important to know the word. Also, you must know how to apply the word. I always ask for a double portion for everything. I ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment and wisdom. I even ask the Most High for a double portion of his spirit. Remember, some have not because they ask not. Israelites, Fasting and praying against a specific spirit is not going to cause all spirits that torment you to flee. Once you identify the devil, you have to war against that spirit as well as all the other spirits working against you. The scripture said in the book of Matthew that when the devil returned, it finds his house clean and in order. The spirit that called you his house recruit other spirits more wicked than itself to reclaim its home. Then go with he. And taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The man in the tomb confirmed what the scripture said about the devil bringing seven other spirits more wicked than itself to dwell there. The man in the tomb had legions of devils occupying him. Israelites, it's important for you to understand that spiritual warfare is an ongoing battle. Just because you receive deliverance from one spirit, it doesn't mean all your problems are solved. Israelites, once the Most High deliver you from a devil, you have to maintain your deliverance. You're always going to deal with a devil or worker of iniquity coming against you. If you're righteous and you're living a set-apart life that pleases the Most High, the enemy will use the people around you that are jealous or hate you to oppress you. When you serve the Most High, he place a hedge around you. The Most High also give his angels charge over you. The Satans, the workers of iniquity, and the unclean spirits can get to you. Remember when the Most High said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Satan replied with, Didn't you put a hedge around him and everything that he has? Israelites, as long as the hedge of protection is around you, the kingdom of darkness can get to you. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. The moment the hedge of protection was removed, Job experienced all sorts of trials and tribulations. 
If the life you're living pleases the Most High, the workers of iniquity will find it difficult to attack you. The Satans will use the people around you to get to you. The Satans will use the lawless people around you to influence you to let your guard down. Social media is the gateway for the kingdom of darkness to use the lawless to corrupt many others. The lawless on social media are usually popular with a large following. Israelites, be mindful of the people you hang with and you let enter your personal space. Israelites, it's best to have a few good friends than a large group of friends that are truly your enemies. Israelites, it's better to live a private life when you serve the Father. To the people that question why some of us are private, we don't want to give the enemy the opportunity to attack us through lawless people. It's nothing personal, it's just using discernment. Anyone's spirit that disturbed my spirit, I don't associate with them. I cut them off quick. Keeping bad company can certainly corrupt you. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner. With such an one, know not to eat. Israelites, you have to be selective about everything, especially with the people you associate with. You don't want the legions of devils operating in them to oppress you. The time has come for you to use discernment. The Satans will use the people closest to you to attack you. That's why you have to keep the armor on. Be careful of the company you keep and the people you call friends. There are some Israelites who believe they don't have any unclean spirits operating in them. When I said in a video a few years back and I continue to speak on the topic of everything is a spirit, some people laugh and said personalities and traits can't be spirits. The people who don't believe that personality and traits are spirits, these are the very people walking around with legions of demons attached to them, like the man in the tomb. The only difference between them and the man in the tomb is that the man in the tomb was aware of the legions in him, and when he saw the Messiah, he ran to him seeking deliverance. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Israelites, everything is a spirit. What you call personality traits are spirits. Death is a spirit. Hate is a spirit. Unbelief is a spirit. Meekness is a spirit. Discernment is a spirit. Wisdom is a spirit. And the scriptures refer to the spirit of wisdom as a sheep. Some of you are literally like the man in the tomb and have no idea. At least the man in the tomb seek deliverance when he saw the Messiah. Today, Israelites are walking around with heavy demonic chains on their life and they have no knowledge. Some Israelites never repented nor break the covenant they made before their awakening. Those covenants are still valid regardless if you're in the awakening. You have to denounce the idols you serve. You have to break those covenants, not only the covenants you establish, but your ancestors' covenants as well. The scripture said to repent of the sins of your fathers. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me. As you can see, Israelites, deliverance is an ongoing process until the day of our redemption. Just because you were delivered from a devil, it doesn't mean you won't ever need deliverance again. A lot of people are expecting their problems to never exist after deliverance. That is false. You will go through all kinds of trials and tribulations. The enemy will keep tempting you until the day you leave this realm. The scriptures tell us to pray. The word of the Most High went on to say, pray all kinds of prayers. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Every spiritual and religious person know that you must pray if you want the help of the Most High. It has been ingrained into our minds to pray to God for everything that we need. Praying is talking to the Father. If we want an intervention from the Father, we must pray and ask the Most High what we need. A lot of people pray, and when their prayers are not answered in the way that they thought, it caused them to doubt and question the existence of the Most High. 
Because religion failed to teach the people the process about prayer, most people believe that their prayers are unanswered. Israelites, if you have been paying attention, most of the time after you pray or fast, when you sleep, you dream. Because the people lack knowledge about the spirit realm, they had no idea that the Most High would respond to their prayers in the spirit realm. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Most of the time, the answer to your prayers are revealed to you in the spirit realm. It's important that you learn to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Remember the language of the spirit realm are symbols. You have to use the word of the most high to help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Israelites, the first thing that happens after you pray, the most high has to either accept your prayers and sacrifice or he will reject your petition. If the most high reject your prayers, you will continue to be oppressed by the Satans. Sin is the only thing that will cause the Most High to reject you and hinder your prayers. Sin separates you from the Most High. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Your sins will cause a separation between you and the Most High that He will not hear you. Israelites, we are living at a time that we need our prayers to be heard. Israelites, make sure that you're living a life that pleases the Father, that your prayers are not hindered. Some of you believe there's nothing hindering your prayers. The spirit realm will reveal everything your carnal eyes cannot see. Remember, your focus should be on the unseen. What is happening in your life behind the scenes is what matters. What you see in the physical realm is the manifestation of what took place behind the scenes. This is why you need to shift your focus to what's happening behind the scenes. For example, in the physical realm, you may appear to be a wholesome person. However, behind the scenes, your spirit is engaging in all kinds of sexual perversion in the spirit realm. Your spirit is the real you. The marine spirit cannot overpower you unless you give it permission. Can two walk together except they be agreed? When you don't break the covenant, you give the devil permission. A lot of people enjoy the sexual perversion their spirit engage in in the spirit realm. Some believe it's normal. It's not normal. You need to seek deliverance. Israelites, you must deal with the legions operating in you. Once you're delivered, you can help others find deliverance. A lot of Israelites don't know what happens behind the scenes after they pray. A lot of things takes place after you pray. If your prayers are accepted and heard, the Most High will communicate with you by giving you confirmation via a message, a person, or the spirit realm. If your prayers was accepted in the spirit realm, you will begin to see yourself victorious over the devil that oppresses you. Remember, whatever happens in the spirit realm will manifest in the physical realm. If you see yourself fighting back against the devil oppressing you, the Most High gave you victory over the devil and he answered your prayers by showing you in the spirit realm. If the spirit of poverty is what you seek deliverance from, you will see yourself in the spirit realm fighting back against the spirit of poverty. The spirit of poverty often masquerades itself in the spirit realm in the form of rats or roaches infesting your house. The spirit of poverty can masquerade as a thief stealing your purse or wallet. If you chase the person down and take your wallet or purse back, that is victory. If you kill the bugs in your house instead of running from it, that is victory. With the Most High showing you fighting back in the spirit realm, that is how he's communicating with you to let you know he granted you your heart desire. If you're righteous, there's no good thing will the Most High withhold from you. He will give you the desires of your heart. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Some Israelites' worldly expectations hinder their view. Some Israelites believe being delivered from the spirit of poverty is having millions of dollars in the bank. 
Israelites, there are people who have millions, even billions, and they can't spend or do what they want with the money. Sometimes you can have millions or billions and your debt increase. Having a lot of money does not cause the spirit of poverty to flee. The spirit of poverty will make you spend your millions and billions on material things until you're broke and have no inheritance to pass down to your children. We see this happening in the Israelite and indigenous black people's community right now. Generational wealth is non-existent in the black community. The scriptures gave us an example, the prodigal son requesting his inheritance from his father. He spent all of the money and became broke. When he finally realized his sin, he humbled himself and returned to his father's house after the spirit of poverty robbed him of all his money. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. The Most High's thoughts and ways are greater than ours. Let the Most High deliver us his way. Israelites, the Most High answered your prayers. The problem is that some Israelites don't like the answer to their prayers. The response did not meet their expectation. Israelites, just because the Most High's response to your prayers did not meet your expectation, it doesn't mean you weren't delivered. The Most High don't operate the way the world operates. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Israelites, after the Most High show you victory in the spirit realm, make sure to claim your victory by accepting the covenant. Your faith plays a major role in your deliverance as well as your prayers being answered. If you have low expectation in the Most High, you won't recognize when the Most High has delivered you. Israelites, it's important that you have great faith in the Most High. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Most High. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. The spirit of unbelief have robbed many Israelites. The time has come for you to believe the Most High. Israelites, praying plays a key role in your deliverance. You're communicating with the Most High and making your petition known when you pray. You have to pray and fast to engage in spiritual warfare. After you pray, the Most High will begin to command His angels on your behalf. If your prayers and sacrifice are accepted, the Most High will send His angels to arrest the devil oppressing you. You will see this take place in the spirit realm. Your intercessor will fight for you after the Most High, the Father, issue the command. Israelites, your intercessor, the mediator between God and men, so many people worship, cannot do anything until the Father give him the command. Regardless if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, the Father has to say to the intercessor, so many of you know as Yahshua, but it's truly Michael, the commander of chief to the army of the Most High and the Most High's intercessor, according to the book of Enoch. And I will give thee, Enoch, my intercessor, the archistratage Michael, for the handwritings of thy fathers, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, and Jared, thy father. The Most High, the Father, has to say to the intercessor, go and help her or him, deliver them from this devil. Your prince will send his angels to arrest the devil oppressing you. The spirit realm will reveal all of this to you. When you see people in a police uniform arresting a devil in the spirit realm, the dream is revealing to you victory. Your prayers was accepted and the Most High delivered you. All of this is happening behind the scenes. Israelites, the time has come for you to walk in the spirit. When you spend time in the presence of the Father, he will open your eyes to what lies behind the scenes. The spirit realm show you everything the carnal eyes cannot see. The visions you see when you sleep are not given to you for no reason. You have to find out what the Most High is saying to you. Throughout the scriptures, the Most High spoke with his people in the spirit realm. The scripture said in the book of Numbers, if there's a prophet among you, I will make myself known to him in a vision and speak to him in a dream. And he said, hear now my words. 
if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. The time has come for Israelites to open their eyes and ears to listen to what the Most High is saying to you in a dream or a vision. Israelites, a lot takes place after you pray. Just because you don't see angels ascending and descending upon the earth with your carnal eyes, it doesn't mean they are not operating behind the scenes on your behalf. The Most High is commending His angels and giving them charge over you if you're righteous. Deliverance come when your ways please the Most High. Israelites, don't think nothing happens when you pray. If you're not a part of the remnant behind the scenes after you pray, the devils will place a stronger hold on your life. Israelites, make sure that you're serving the Father in the spirit and in truth. When a time of need comes, the Most High can deliver you through his angels he gave charge over you. But he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation.